Hello again. This is very different from some of my typical videos as I think it addresses a deeply rooted colonial thought that has plagued North America ever since the settlers first came here. First, I want to say that I acknowledge my position of who I am and that I'll truly never understand the extent of the systemic colonialism and how it's affected Aboriginals. However, I do feel like I've been able to change my perspective in the right direction to begin to see how I can integrate this into my life. This semester, I've had a very eye-opening integration of concepts in a lot of my courses, particularly between my history, English, and my senior seminar course that I'm currently taking, which has helped me develop a new perspective on what Indigenous resilience and reconciliation truly means to society today, and also to what it means to myself. The two sources that really struck me was the introduction to the fifth edition to Visions of a Heart and also a video done by Dr. Susan D. Dion called Complicating Empathy. The first one acknowledges how simply just apologizing isn't enough and there needs to be an attitude switch. Well, the second one talks about how empathy can be twisted to the point where it's really not empathy anymore and it, it actually benefits um, the colonized nations. So let's look into that a little bit more. To understand the extent of the damage done by settlers, we need to look at the very beginning. When people first started coming over here to North America, not only did they attempt and succeed at conquering the Aboriginals, but they also brought disease. This disease wiped out 90% of the population. This was followed by years of oppression, mistreatment, and exploitation of Aboriginal people. Unfortunately, the part of that mistreatment is still seen today and it's so ingrained in our society that a lot of people don't realize it's happening unless you're part of the people group that's getting mistreated. The introduction to the vision of the heart addresses a relationship between Indigenous people and non-Indigenous people, pointing out that the Canadian government, beginning with Pierre Trudeau, has looked for ways to assimilate rather than integrate Indigenous cultural ideas and peoples. Though they made it sound like a step towards a type of reconciliation, the writers acknowledge that assimilation is really not the answer. Another interesting point that this article had mentioned was that Europeans tended to impose visions of what Indigenous people's proper interests should be. Personally, I think this goes beyond this as non-Aboriginals tend to impose their idea of what they think Aboriginal culture should be. Uh, this reminds me of a story called The Loons by Margaret Lawrence, where a young white girl essentially creates this mystical, magical world that her Métis friend should fit into. And then when her friend didn't really fit into this, uh, she completely dismisses her Métis identity. Not only did the Europeans want to get rid of the, rid of the Indigenous identity, but when society decided to embrace it, people tended to have their own visions of what it should look like without even asking the Aboriginals what it actually is production then brings some ideas to combat this mindset that has developed over hundreds of years. Um, things such as traditionally based educational initiatives, ancestral cultural and language revitalization efforts in these indigenous communities. It also begins to address issues of the systemic racism in these communities and also outside of these communities as well. These type of initiatives, in my perspective, should be led by the Aboriginal community where people understand their culture and really can truly communicate the power of their culture um, to the next generation. Uh, also, we do have to tread lightly on this, as Dr. Susan D. Dion explains in the video, that society can be in danger of abusing empathy to the point where it actually makes the Indigenous people so victimized that they're responsible for their own healing which doesn't seem fair considering the hundreds of years of mistreatment that they've endured from the colonized nations. In the video, Complicating Empathy, Dr. Susan D. Dion made such a great point with empathy. She states that empathy has, has the potential to allow individuals in the colonized nation to occupy the position of the good white savior who can take care of the poor Aboriginal people which I believe is exactly the direction the government took when Stephen Harper apologized for the mistreatment of Aboriginals. Though it seems sincere, it also looked like a band-aid, which made the government look good. Dr. Dion also points out that true empathy comes from all sides, with all stories being shared. In order to take responsibility, the people from the colonized nations can't be afraid to admit the truth of the horrific treatment that they put the Aboriginals through in the past and talk about those details. 
This type of act puts the responsibility on them to fully understand what happened. It's really hard, but it can open up an honest dialogue. Suddenly, empathy takes on a new understanding because they were the cause of the oppression and the victimization of the Aboriginal people. You probably noticed that I haven't done any PowerPoints or drawings, and I really don't even have a background behind me. I did this because I believe that this topic needs an honest dialogue and it's not hidden behind any type of distraction. I've learned so much about the horrors of colonialism lately, and we ask why minority groups are marginalized and how Aboriginals don't feel like there's been true reconciliation, and well, it makes sense why they feel this way. How can you unwind the years of systemic racism and colonialism that has plagued this earth for hundreds of years? This attitude has been so ingrained into human nature that we have it in our very core. And in order to get rid of it, we need to go into that core and start breaking it down. And that's hard, especially when we don't realize it actually exists or we're really unaware of how our attitudes are molded by society in the hundreds of years behind us. To think European colonization has been has well has beaten down and almost stripped a group of people of their identity, and then we ask why they don't just get out of it, it amazes me we have this type of conception. Let's begin to take real action and responsibility for what's been done and change our attitude towards a more integrated future that truly embraces Canada's actual past, the history of our true people, the Aboriginals. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night.